I've been mucked up by you and your committee for long enough. I'll be the one to say when I come back, if I come back. What do you mean, if you come back? I'm fast coming to the conclusion, Albert Tatlock, that the air up there is much more to my liking than it is round here these days. And you can take that any way you like. the centre, he kept hard, carried the ball through, 
goes Pike. Allen is in there. Oh, it's a goal. No, it's not offside. The flag's up. The flag's up. Not given. The linesman on this side was flagging. As the ball was knocked on Allen, darting in, but the flag was up. And West Ham thought they had a winner, which was wiped out. Good evening on this vitally important FA Cup night. The two semi-finals have been replayed tonight and we're able to bring you the action and from controversial both. of the semi-finals on Saturday. Their 1-1 draw at Villa Park included a much debated penalty and the sending off of the man who scored from it, Ryan Kidd, plus a disallowed West Ham goal. And the man in the middle of it all, referee Colin Seal, was in charge again tonight at Ellen Road, Leeds, where our commentator is Barry Davis. West Ham United without uh, Patsy Holland who was injured in the first match and also without Arvin Martin because of tonsillitis. But they have returned to fitness. Frank Lampard at number two. Stewart and Bonds will be at the centre of the defence and Pike will play in midfield. Brooking. Again, that so important look up. Devonshire. Pearson. Devonshire is in the gap. Can he put it in? He can! Oh, that's a brilliant goal! That is a marvellous goal! But I said he looked the most likely. Really was a lovely goal. Billy Wright tried him back to bring him down and didn't succeed. Got the return. Oh! It was the greatest Cockney record. 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 Right, but that's done for right seven minutes left. I like to thank my man. Have you ever been a player for? Oh, 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 oh
as is his wont, as the players go to their supporters. Well, at least we now know one of the teams at Wembley. I hope that little interruption didn't spoil your enjoyment. We can meet now the two men whose goals put West Ham through. Alan Devonshire and Frank Lampard. Here they are now talking with Barry Davis. Well, it's a bit of a cliche question, but I think it's the right one. How does it feel, Frank? Well, we've been here before at Wembley. It's, uh, it was fantastic, but I think this time, you know, beats it. You know, being a second division second side and coming all this, all this way and getting to the final. It's an unbelievable feeling, yeah. For you, Alan, something new? Yeah, it's a dream come true, you know, I just can't believe it. It's just magic. You, in fact, had a super game, if I may say so. Well, I enjoyed it, you know, like, I think all the lads played great. And uh, so it was a pity that someone had to lose, really, because uh, both teams wanted to win so bad. And uh, so little Frankie <laughs> got the old goal. But so often, Frank, semi-finals are lost because of somebody's mistake. Here we had three goals, which was as good as anybody could possibly have wished for in a semi-final. Yeah, I think that was the standard of the game, really. It's such a nice standard that... That there to be good goals, I think, because it was such, you know, the game, both the games were so tight and no one giving it away. And I think that to be good goals to, you know, to, to, to score. Alan, let's take yours first. Um, I mean, it was a super goal, really marvellous goal, wasn't it? Yeah, I can't really remember a lot about it, you know, I just remember picking the ball up and uh, I played a one-two with Stuart Pearson. And the keeper, and I think the centre-half come across and just slide between them. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> in fact, he came across, I think, just hurling himself at you. It was Billy Wright, in fact. Is it? Yeah. Could've yeah, missed, I just, just, just not seen it. Huh? Could you miss, could you? No, well, <laughs> I'll see it going, though, will <laughs> Be honest, when it got to 1-1, one, one, did you think that was another replay? Yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, as I say, like, you know, so tight the game. And uh, as I say, I thought the first one was enough. As I say, they've done great to get back. As I say, it's a funny game football, and a couple minutes from the end, didn't you see it? Yeah, it's it's a funny game, and I apologise for this, Frank. I described you as an unlikely goal scorer. Yeah, um, it's the first I've scored this year, and uh, I think it'd come at a good time, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that must be the understatement of the what, season. I don't know what I was doing up there, but uh, I'll settle for it anyway. Well, congratulations. Who do you want to meet, Arsenal or Liverpool? Well, it doesn't matter. Great, well, we're there. That's the mate. We really enjoy it when we're there. Well, we enjoyed it tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you right, then, let's hear what Jimmy Hill has to think about that one. Well, I found it a most enjoyable game, and I think that even Everton supporters, who I've always found to be very fair-minded, would agree that in the end of the day, West Ham deserved to win it. There's no question about it that Everton had the game early on for the first half an hour. West Ham soaked up the pressure gradually and got their fluent game going. And that Les Devonshire, who was nearly lost at the game, actually, he came out of non-league football, back into the game, having been rejected, really looks a prospect, not only for West Ham, but for England. And to see Frank Lampard, wonderful servant to West Ham, scoring that winning goal, I think really would bring joy to anybody with a sort of football soul, whichever team that they support. From this throw-in, Trevor Brookings, the man who puts the cross there, it's nodded back, and he just gently guides it inside that post. 